So let's say that we're given the following parametric equations. Given that r1 is equal to t, t squared, and t cubed, and then r2 is equal to 1 plus 2t, 1 plus 6t, and then 1 plus 14t. That's the x, y, and z component, respectively. And we ask ourselves two questions. Will the particles collide, the particles that travel along this as t is traced out, will they collide as t is traced out, and will the paths that the particles trace out over time intersect? These are two separate questions. So let's have a look at this graphically and then go through it algebraically. Okay, so let's address the first question. Will the particles collide as time is traced out? So here we have the particles traced out from t is negative 1. And wait for it, they're going to appear. There's one. There goes the other one. That's the straight line. And time is traced out. And you can see the other one's already out. And as we move up, the other particle moves up. So there they are traced out in time. So it looks like, no, the particles don't intersect. They come pretty close to intersecting right around here, but they do not actually intersect as time is traced out. Okay. So that one, we can probably guess the answer uh, is no. Okay. For the first question, the answer is no. And then we ask, will the paths that the particles trace out over time actually intersect? Okay. So here's the paths that they trace out. Now, unfortunately, I haven't figured out how to actually have the little particles move along with the paths. That's a limitation of the graphing program or me. I'm sorry. But this is the paths that the particles trace out. And if we move this thing around and kind of get some different views on it, it looks like it looks like the paths do intersect. It looks like they intersect at two places, actually. It looks like they intersect around here. And then as we go up, it looks like it intersects at about there as well. So we're going to guess that, yeah, the pads do intersect. Um, and not only that, but they intersect uh, twice. Again, from another view, it looks like they intersect here, and it looks like they intersect there. Okay. So now let's actually go and do this algebraically. So we're going to guess. Yes, these are our guesses. Guesses based on the visuals. Okay. So for the question of will the particles collide, okay, the strategy is we're going to see if there's a single time, just one time, t, such that r1 of t is equal to r2 of t, keeping in mind that r1 and r2 are these equations. Uh, the strategy is we'll just take the first components and set them equal to each other. In other words, t equals 1 plus 2t. Okay. This should be pretty easy to solve. This is going to tell us that t is equal to negative 1. So if there is a time when these particles intersect, it's going to be when t equals negative 1. And then what we'll do is we'll just find r1 of negative 1. Right? And that's just going to be 1. And then negative, well, I'm sorry, negative 1. And then negative 1 squared is... Uh, positive 1, and then negative 1 to the third, right? So this is just negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. Sorry for my sloppy notation there. And then we'll do the same, r2 of negative 1. Okay? Uh, this is going to be 1 plus 2 times negative 1, comma 1, plus 6 times negative 1, comma 1, plus 14 times negative 1, and this is equal to negative 1, negative 5, negative 13. And right there, we have our answer. OK, the answer is no. They do not collide. And here's why. The first component agrees, negative 1 and negative 1. The second component is 1, but the second component over here is 5. 1 does not equal 5 particles do not intersect. Okay, and we're done. Now, the second question says, do the paths that the particles trace out, do those paths intersect? Okay, and this is a little bit more complicated. Remember, um, when we're looking at the paths, you know, we're talking about the whole thing as if it left a tracer trail behind it. 
and it looked like they did. So we want to see if there's a time t for r1 and another time s, call it, for r2 such that r1 of t is equal to r2 of s. So maybe like t is uh, 1 half and s is 3, but at, for different times over each different pass they might collide. Okay, And we do the same thing as we did before. We'll start um, with, with this, only saying for the second one it's going to be a function of s. And so we'll set uh, t equal to 1 plus 2s, right? And then we'll take the second component, t squared, and 1 plus 6t, right? 1 plus 6s. And keeping in mind that t is equal to 1 plus s, we'll rewrite this as 1 plus 2s squared equals 1 plus 6s. Okay? Now from here we just have to do a little bit of expanding, 1 plus 4s. I'm assuming this algebra should be pretty easy for you. 4s squared equals 1 plus 6s. Uh, do a little bit more simplifying and we'll get um, 4s squared minus 2s equals 0. Factor out the 2s and we'll have 2s minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, s equals 0 and s equals negative. Oh, I'm sorry s equals just one half, not negative one half, positive one half. Right? Okay, that's good. Well now we go back up to here. If s is equal to zero, that means t is equal to one. And if s is equal to one half, that means t is equal to two. Okay, I'm just plugging those values into this equation. So now we have our s and t pairs. So what do we do? We find r1 of 1, and that's 1, 1, 1. And then we'll find r2 of 0, because remember 1 and 0 are paired together here. And that's going to be 1, 1, 1. So this is a match. This is uh, a point in space where the particle paths that they trace out actually intersect. And then we'll do the same thing for uh, t equals 2 and s equals 1 half. So r1 of 2 equals 2, 4, and 8. And again, I'm getting that from this equation of what r1 is. And then r2 of 1 half equals, again, we're going to plug in 1 half here, and that's going to be 2, 4, and 8. So yes, here's another collision point. These are the two points where, I'm sorry, the paths intersect. Paths of particles intersect at these points. Okay, and just to look at the visuals again, here are the paths of the particle, and you can see it looks like x is 1, y is 1, and z is 1 there's that point, and then we have x is 2, y is 4, z is 8, and that's that point all the way up there. That's the paths intersecting. And we can obviously see from before, as we trace out time, the particles themselves come close, but they don't ever actually uh, intersect with one another. All right, I hope this was helpful, and have a great day.